Hello again. In the last video, I promised I would show you how to invert a matrix. And so what I'm going to do is follow through here, and I'm going to show you how to invert a matrix based on the same example I did in the last video. Now this is two simple linear equations in X and Y, and I've written them out in matrix form. Now matrix algebra is an entire field of mathematics, and a very important one. For right now, though, we can consider it mostly a way of writing linear equations down. It is much more than that in its totality. But for right now, this is the only part we really care about. Okay? So to get the matrix here, I start with the coefficients in front of these variables. So 3, 5, 4, minus 4, right where you see them. Now notice that the x and y terms line up with each other. It's very important that you have those in the right place when you write this out. This is a matrix I'll call A. I can call it anything I want, I'll call it A. Now, this column vector, now a vector is a matrix that only has one column. It has as many rows as the matrix does in this case, and only one column. I'm going to write that, uh, that out as capital X, and this is the uh, vector of constants here. That's just the stuff on the right side of equal sign. Okay, so there we go. Now, if these were algebraic equations, if I wanted to find x, I would just divide, let me try this again, I'm going to call this b, um, I would divide b by a. Well, because of the way matrix algebra works, you don't actually divide by a, you multiply by the inverse. Okay, that's still very similar to how this would be if those were just scalar numbers. And there we are. Okay, that's how this is going to look. Now, for reasons that I don't have time to go into here, we pre-multiply. That A goes on the front of B like this. But when I multiply that, that uh, matrix, the inverse of A, times B, I'm going to get that. So all I've got to do now is figure out where, how to make the inverse of A. Now, the easy way to do it, of course, is to type this into your calculator if you have a TI-86 or 89 or 84, one of those. Just type this in and tell it to give you the inverse, and it'll give you this block of numbers. But it'd be kind of nice to know what's going on in here. There's lots of ways to invert a matrix, and I'm going to show you a fairly simple one. Last time we talked about row operations. Row operations are all legitimate things to do. And I'm going to make one change to this matrix here, A. I'm going to perform some row operations on it. When I'm done, I'll have the inverse. So what I'm going to do here is write this out matrix A here. With one change, I'm going to append another matrix to the right side of it. Now this is called an augmented matrix. This is A, just like before. And this one over here is something called the identity matrix. The identity matrix is the matrix equivalent of 1. If I multiply a matrix by the identity matrix, I get the same thing back. It's like if I multiply uh, 4 by 1, I get 4. Right? This is the matrix equivalent of a 1. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to perform row operations on this augmented matrix, and I'm going to keep doing it till this side is the identity matrix. This side is now going to be the inverse of A. So let's do that. I'm going to start by saying R1 equals R1 times 1 third, and R2 equals R2 times 1 fourth. Now just so we're, we're clear on this, row 1, R1 is there, and row 2, R2, is right there. So I'm going to divide the first row by 3 and the uh, second row by 4. I think you see Y here. Let's see, so that's going to be 1, 5 over 3, 1, minus 1. Now, I'm going to divide this by 3 as well. I have to do the same thing to the, this side of the matrix that I do to the other side. All right, so that's now going to be 1 over 3, 0, and 0, 1 over 4. Okay, there's my next step. Remember, I'm trying to make this side be the identity matrix. So the next thing I'm going to do is say R2 equals R2 minus R1. Okay? I'm going to subtract this row from that row. Well, the first row is unchanged. Okay. And that 
that's going to be unchanged because I'm subtracting a zero from it. This, this side is not going to be unchanged. This is going to change now. Three, or minus one is minus three over three, and I'm, from that I'm going to subtract five over three, so I'm going to get minus eight over three. From here I'm going to subtract one third, so I get minus one third here. I'm going to check my, my uh, cheat sheet here and make sure I'm doing this right. I've done a couple of takes now. And let's see, there, 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 there. Okay, this is right. Yeah, this is the second or third time I've tried this without messing up. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this row right here by, uh, let's see, 5 over 8, because I want this to be 5 over 3rd, so I can cancel that out. So I'm going to say R2 equals R2 times 5 over 8. All right, I think you might see where I'm headed here. So that's 1. Make some more room here. So I'm going to get 1, 5 over 3, 1, third, and 0, because remember row 1 hasn't changed. I'm not doing anything to it, so I just write it down again. Okay, there's that now. I get minus 5 over 3. Okay, this is now going to be minus 5 over uh, 24. Okay, and that's now going to be. 5 over 32. Okay, I'm almost there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add row 2 to row 1. Okay, so I'm going to need some more room up here. And I'm going to say row 1 equals row 1 plus row 2. So I'm going to add this to that and replace that there. So adding 0 doesn't change anything. Adding that makes that a 0. Add that to that. Now let's see. That's 8 over 24. Let's see. Minus uh, 5 over 24 is going to give me 3 over 24, right? Which is really 1 eighth. And let's see. Uh, that's going to be 5 over 32 there. I've had a good feeling about this. And the second row is unchanged. Okay, so far so good. Last thing I'm going to do now is multiply the second row by minus 3 over 5. Okay, now let's double check and make sure I got this right here. Okay, 1, 0, 0, minus 5 over 3, yes, 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 and yes. Okay, I'm on, I'm on a good glide slope here. So the first row, it's written down unchanged. 4, 5 over 32. Second row, now, that becomes a 1. So you can see right there, there's the identity matrix. So if I get this right, what's over there is going to be the inverse of A. Okay, so let's, let's bring it on home here. So that's going to be 3 over 24, and that's going to be minus 3 over 32. Make sure I got that right. I did. Okay, that becomes 1 eighth, and so does that. So I'm going to write out A inverse equals 1 eighth, oh, 1 eighth, 5 over 32, and minus 3 over 32. And there you have it. There's the inverse of my original matrix.